It's August. Holy shit, we are into the second half of 2023, which means that on this particular show, we are into the second half of 1993, August of 1993. For those of you who are new, I do this every month. It is me talking about all of the musical pop culture-ish shit that went on 30 years ago this month, this time in 1993. I did one last year that was 1992. And whatever I feel is noteworthy in uh, the world of old head, I will talk about. And while it's not an amazing month, there's definitely some stuff to talk about. I mean, last month I was I was assuming it was going to be an awful show, and I feel like it was one of my best. Go check that one out after this if you haven't. Not really any noteworthy news stories from August of 1993. I mean, anything that I want to talk about anyway. Some people will point out that there was a big metal story that happened in August of 1993. Um, but guess what? I don't care! Google it if you want to. And so let's move over to the music charts. For the first two weeks of August 1993, the number one album in America was Black Sunday, the second album from Cypress Hill, obviously driven by the huge success of the single Insane in the Brain. But no, 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 we couldn't be cool for too long, ladies and gentlemen, because for the third week of August 1993, the number one album in America was the Sleepless in Seattle soundtrack. I've never heard this soundtrack. I've never seen the movie. P people have said it's a good movie, but guess what? I don't care! And finally, a little bit better for the fourth week of August, the number one album in America was River of Dreams from Billy Joel. This is kind of when I fell off of the Billy Joel thing. I was into Billy Joel when I was a kid, and I still like a lot of that 70s, 80s Billy Joel. But... Uh, I, I remember the single, was is the song called River of Dreams? I just remember being like, yeah, okay. And that brings us to everybody's favorite segment of the show. The Hot Ten. That's right, the Hot Ten. The 10 most popular songs on the Billboard Hot 100 for this month, the beginning of this month. I always go for the first week of the month of 1993, and this happened to fall on August 1st, 1993. At number 10, we have Tina Turner with I Don't Really Wanna Fight No More. And that song was from the soundtrack for the movie What's Love Got To Do With It, which is about Tina Turner. It's got to feel weird to record an original song for a soundtrack of a movie about you, but you're not playing you in the movie, but you're still good enough to do the songs for the movie. Sticking around at number nine, we have Robin S. with Show Me Love. We've, we've already done that song a couple times. And number eight, we have Janet Miss Jackson, If You're Nasty, with That's The Way Love Goes. Number seven, a new one, Tony, 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 with If I Had No Loot. Now, that's a song that I, I did remember, but the chorus wasn't the part that immediately sprung to mind. It was the beginning of the song where it goes, la da da day, la da 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 day, hey. And you can do Jack Swing on my nuts. At number six, we have Jodeci with Lonely. Honestly, I don't know this song. I don't really know much Jodeci. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, Jodeci was like the winger of R&B. Like, I remember people making fun of other people for listening to Jodeci. So I, of course, wasn't going to get caught up in any of that shit. At number five, we have Onyx with Slam! Dup, 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 dup. Let the boys be boys! Slam! Dup, dup, dup. Dup, dup, dup. Make noise, be boys! At number four, probably the best known song on this entire countdown, a brand new one for the month of August 1993, The Proclaimers with I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the, the man, man who walked who a thousand walked miles to fall down at your door. At number three, my girl's SWV still sticking around. I, I'm, I've done this one a couple of times. I'm still going to do it again today. Can't explain how you love and makes me weak. Ooh, that was nice. 
Number two, tag team back again with Whoop. There it is. Whoop. There it is. Where is it? It's over there. Oh, Whoop. There it is. And finally, at number one, we have UB40 with an I can help falling in love with you. Movies! What was happening in the theater in August of 1993 um, in America? I, I realize this is US-centric, but fuck it, that's where I live. If you live somewhere else and you want to hear me talk about some other country, I'm not going to, because guess what? I don't care! For the first week of August 1993, the number one movie in America was a movie called Rising Sun with Sean Connery and Wesley Snipes. I don't know if I've ever seen this movie. I mean, I love Wesley Snipes, so maybe I need to go check it out at some point. You let me know. Is it worth it? And for the rest of August, for the entire rest of August, the number one movie in America was the Harrison Ford action thriller, The Fugitive, which I do remember seeing in the theater, and I remember liking, but I don't think I ever watched it again. And I'm a Harrison Ford fan, but it, it was one of those movies that came out, I saw it, I enjoyed it, but then after that, if somebody had come to me and said, hey, Fugitive's on TV, I would have said, Album releases! Now we talk about the albums that came out in August of 1993. Nothing like super amazing in, in my opinion, but some really solid shit. On August 3rd, the seventh album from the Canadian progressive metal thrash band Voivod came out, The Outer Limits. This is Clearly not an OG copy. Were there vinyl copies in 1993? I don't know. This one I think is from 2022. But this album is fucking great. It's a fucking Voivod album. And I really like the 90s Voivod stuff. Sure, they moved away from the thrashiness. But I feel like they got weirder. And I, I, I love that about them. Moving all the way to August 17th, 1993. A big day. A lot of releases came out this day. And this is the first one we're going to talk about. Breaking Things, the fifth album from All, and the first featuring vocalist Chad Price, who you can see, that's Bill Stevenson, but you can see Chad in the picture there. This is quite possibly my favorite All album. And I know this is not record roulette, but this is a 93 pressing and it is the worst sounding <laughs> record I own. I've done a little research and I found that there are good pressings of this album from 93 and then other ones that are just complete shit. But the music on this album is not complete shit. It's fucking great. It's all breaking things. Also on August 17th, I do not have this album on vinyl, but I would very much like it because I love it. The debut album from the band Clutch, Transnational Speedway League, Anthems, Anecdotes, and Undeniable Truths. I love this album. I love the first two Clutch albums. There's an energy and an oddness and something that sounded like nobody else was doing at the time. And I so much love this particular album when it came out. I've said it before, whenever there's that stuff that's weird and hard to categorize, I relate to it because I've always felt like I am pretty weird and hard to categorize. And yes, I know after this album and after their second album, they, they went on to make a whole shitload of albums and people love them and I've heard all those albums, but guess what? I don't care! Sticking right here on August 17th, 1993, the second album from the California punk band Pennywise, Unknown Road. This is my favorite Pennywise album. I. I don't think Pennywise has done a bad album. If you like the Pennywise sound, you get that on every album, and it's always a good time. Uh, Unknown Road also was probably the first Pennywise album I heard, which I'm pretty sure I probably didn't hear it until, like, 94. But uh, still, killer album. Finally wrapping up August 17th, the third studio album from Typo Negative, Bloody Kisses. Once again, I was very much into this album when it came out because it sounded like nothing I had heard before. And I still enjoy it today, but I have to be honest, there is no other album that Typo Negative did that holds up to this one and that I even really like. Once again, a band that has a shitload of fans and they sing the praises of every Typo Negative album, but guess what? I don't care! Finally, moving to August 24th, the only album of note that came out on this particular day, 
but it's a good one for you hip hop folk out there. The Alcoholics 21 and Over, the debut album from the Alcoholics, hip hop group from LA, and in my opinion, one of the best hip hop groups of the 90s. And this album is just so much fun from beginning to end. I highly recommend it if you are into hip hop, especially 90s hip hop. And if you're not into hip hop, I don't care. I'm not done with you yet, folks, because once again, we have some VHSs to talk about. On August 16th, this lovely home video was released, Kiss Confidential, with, with a K. And this one is pretty much just a feature-length documentary of the tour for the album Revenge. And on this tour is where Alive 3 was recorded. And just like every home video that Kiss put out, it is a lot of fucking fun if you're into Kiss. If you're not into Kiss, I don't care! Also in August of 1993, another one of these lovely home videos was released. The Rock Video Monthly. Look at this selection of tunes right here. You got Patience Peregrine? Is that how you say that? From The Big F? Which they were a, a lesser known band that only put out two albums. I have the first one on vinyl. It's pretty cool. But this is from their second album. Then we got Shades of Grey from Biohazard. Telephone Call from Life, Sex, and Death. That fucking album, The Silent Majority. Forget about it. One of my favorites of the 90s. We got Monster Magnet with Twin Earth. That's a fucking good one. Oh man, we have Paw with Jesse, you're a good dog, such a good dog. You got Dying Alone from Quicksand, from Slip. That was how I got introduced to Quicksand because Quicksand was shown on Headbangers Ball. They were lumped in with all the metal bands. God damn, then you got Sacred Reich with Crawling. After that, we got a live SOD track, Speak English or Die, from Live at Budokan. Then slowing it down a little bit with Busy B by Ugly Kid Joe. And finally, wrapping it up with everybody's favorite, Winger with Down Incognito from their album Pull, which I think was pretty much the beginning of the end for Winger. But yeah, I explained these last time. This was a subscription thing that you sent off for from magazines, and every month they would send you a video like this with a bunch of cool music videos on it. If you're curious, I got this one on eBay. If you just search Rock Video Monthly on eBay, always seems like there's a lot of people trying to get rid of them. I don't know why. They're cool as fuck to me. All right, that is August of 1993. I hope everybody out there had a great time because I still got four, five more months, five, four. Maybe I'll end up rolling on into 1994 or 2024. At this point, it seems likely I'm having a good time doing these, and I hope that you are having a good time watching these. Fuck that. If you didn't have a good time watching this, I don't care. 